Uh, we have Dr. Karesh Moskati and he'll be speaking on acute chemical injury management protocols. Can we have the next? Oh, okay, fine. Thanks. Uh, few take home messages uh, on the acute chemical injuries. So we know of Dua's classification, I take it as red, that you know of Dua's, which has replaced the, the previous Thoft classification and others. It varies from very good to poor, one to six. And uh, we know now we have the concept of limbal stem cells. So we look closely at the limbus. Just one message, when you're classifying, make notes and write down what it is in Dua's classification. And every day, two days, whenever you see the patient, it's dynamic, it can change. So it can go from 3 to 2, it can go from 4 to 2, it can go from 2 to 4. So it's not a one-time classification. We need to uh, change it as, as required because it will affect the prognosis. So emergency treatment, we know just a point on what is copious lavage. Uh, if, if you've got uh, the uh, hospital set up where you've got people to do this for you, please tell them to do it for at least a couple of hours. Copious lavage doesn't mean 5-minute wash with 10 cc syringe. It means one bottle or two bottles of ringers to be used. Uh, if early reported, you can do a paracentesis. If it's a Lyme injury, Chuna injury, then you must make sure you remove all the Lyme. If it's a cooperative patient, you can remove it fine. Otherwise, take up the patient under GA and remove it. And there's no sense in leaving any necrotic material behind. It's dead material. So the earlier you remove it, the better. The importance of 10%, the other things are well known. I'm not stressing on it for time. But 10% ascorbate. Many times I'm asked how to prepare vitamin C drops. There is nothing to prepare. You just need an empty sterile bottle. So take a bottle of tears, empty the contents, break an ampule of vitamin C, which is 500 milligram in 5 cc. Requires nothing except a nice sharp blow to the ampule. Break it, pour it into the, the empty bottle that you have and dispense. If you don't have injection vitamin C available, you get tablet vitamin C, which is 500 milligram, dissolve it in 5 ml of ringers or whatever, and do the same thing. That's again 10%. So it is idiot proof how to make this. And it's extremely important that everyone uses this for any uh, chemical burn. I will also talk a little bit about subconjunctival blood and its importance. So two ways in which blood is used. The, the one is you inject it into the fornices, take blood from the elbow, uh, venous blood, and one cc at night, you, you inject it into the fornices and then put drops of that blood onto the cornea, drop by drop, it will spill over. But at some point, a clot will form, then gently pull the upper lid over the clot so that the clot is kept in place at night. And next morning, you can again, you can remove the patch and the patient can blink. Uh, Again, a, a, a unnecessary a, a drama is created about steroids. Steroid is a big yes in uh, early chemical burns. There are only very few times when you are suspecting infections that you will not use steroid. Remember, steroid reduces inflammation. It does not do anything to epithelial migration. So if, if there is an epithelial defect, the epithelium will still grow in presence of steroid. Sheffer saying and Kenyon's landmark paper in the 80s. So it suppresses inflammation, which is very important. So subconjunctival venous blood, formation of blood clot on the cornea, these are important things. Uh, another landmark paper I want to allude to is the paper by the late uh, uh, Dr. M. H. Sridhar and Dr. Rao and Sangwan et al., which is almost 25 years old now, which proved that you can and you must use amniotic membrane in the early phases. We are all knowing know that when symbolephra occur, you put this, but in the early stages, it reduces the inflammation considerably. It has a huge anti-inflammatory role. It may get absorbed in a week. It may get absorbed in two weeks, depending on the amount of inflammation which is there. But it has tamped down the inflammation, which is very necessary. You can even repeat the amniotic membrane. Supportive treatment is, is uh, uh, standard. Again, I would give oral vitamin C by mouth for these patients. Now to tell you why I'm stressing so much on vitamin C, it reduces the incidence of ulcers and perforations. It is required by fibroblasts to make collagen. You want the building blocks to come in early, so it's required. And it's been proved that uh, in, the, in the anterior chamber of a chemical burn victim, there is almost zero vitamin C left. Why blood? It dilutes the uh, chemical. It uh, separates the tissues. It acts as a barrier against penetration. And it's fibrinolytic. It prevents simblephron. 
So again, it's something which is homemade, which is cheap and um, uh, uh, accessible to everyone, no matter how rural your setting is. And it, it is a huge um, uh, role to play. Again, in the Brighton Cong Cornea Congress, in the European Congress in 1980, it, was, it came out. Since that time, I have been using the last 40 years now, uh, it contains antiproteases which inhibits collagenase. So collagenase is the bad guy who's trying to break down the newly formed collagen which your vitamin C is helping to form. So if you've got this antiproteases, it bashes up the bad guys, the collagenase, and so allows collagen to remain there. And the platelets in the blood fill up the gaps in the denuded surface. So the breaks which are there are all filled up with collagen, with platelets. The platelets also adhere. Platelets are normally cuboidal if you've seen the oval shaped platelets. No longer, when you put it over there, they become like amoeba, they grow pseudopods and they hold on to the collagen as if it is hero holding on to heroin and prevent that collagen from breaking down. So huge the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, role to play of a simple cheap substance and I urge everyone to use the blood. Again, doxycycline is something which is my favorite. It reduces melts. You can use tetracyclines, you can use azithromycin. Doxy is cheap, easily available. And another new thing is tenoplasty. Whenever you got ischemia, uh, to put tenons to fill up those gaps, it doesn't look very nice, but it works very well. Papers coming out from Iran, uh, unlikely place like that, especially during COVID times when we were using oxygen, we are all now used to the concept of oxygen. Using a simple oxygen mask can work wonders just twice a day. Look at this paper which says, Oxygen therapy for acute chemical, again, something which is cheap and is available to us and it has a dramatic effect when it when they did 24 eyes with grade 3 to 4 burns, the corneal epithelial defects heal faster than the oxygen group, 15 days healing versus 60 days. So again, something cheap and something which we can use, increased corneal transparency, decreased corneal vascularization, better visual equity. How is it given? 100% oxygen, simple mask. Flow rate of 10 liters per minute. Again, if you're in a hospital setup, every hospital has got oxygen. Every hospital has a mask. Use it, otherwise admit the patient in the nearest general hospital and, and uh, do this. So again, this has been around since almost over a decade. So to, to summarize, uh, uh, um, three things. Use of topical vitamin C, cheap, easy, easy to make and dispense. Use of the patient's own venous blood, both as subcontinental blood and as clots at night, the subcontinental blood can be repeated every two to three days when you find that there is that the eye is not looking angry, bloody red. Just inject again, it's cheap. And the third thing is the use of oxygen um, in a hospital setting. Just 10 liters per minute twice a day is sufficient and you will really dramatically improve your prognosis in patients with acute chemical burns. Thank I you, thank sir. Thank you so much. And I am apologize if I've overlaid your brain. No, no, no. At all, I think it was an eye opener and beautiful talk. So, and one question, sir. Uh, you give doxycycline for how many days? Uh, any particular regime? At you least, have? at least two months. At, at least, least two at months. Least two months yeah. In spite the cornea has healed up. Yeah, it's just it, it prevents. What is happening is there is a lot of activity going on under that surface which looks healed. Collagenase is working. Collagen is being broken down. So this doxycycline also works as an anti Right. And one thing he mentioned was a copious irrigation. I think that is the, the most important. And second thing he said, don't be afraid of the steroids. I think that's the hallmark. Yeah. Also take up these, if it's a child, I almost always will take the patient up under GA as soon as the anesthetic gives me fitness. Because those chuna particles are so deep in the fornix. I have had children three months and six months after a chuna injury coming to me. I do GA and there is chuna there. How could the child heal if there is chuna constantly reaching into the eye? Yeah. Thank you. The critical period is the first few days, which is when the steroid is most required. Most people do it after two, three weeks, then they will start the patient on steroids. When it is of homeopathy, it doesn't really help. So the second important factor you have spoken is the plasma. I think we can add up the plasma dose for a subsequent 15 days. It's yeah, so going to help blood, us. Blood is cheap and available. You can yeah. take, uh, if you have facilities, you can have plasma rich yeah. serum. So you just, can be exactly. You serum, you dilute the serum 20%, you give it in a 5 ml bottle and yes. you can use it. If, it helps in healing. If you have a bank, then that plasma will be there.